Hi, I'm Father Chris Alar at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and welcome to Ask a Marian. Elma Flannery asks this week, Father Chris, in all your talks, I have never heard you do a specific one on John Paul II. Is there a reason for that? Well, thank you, Alma. I can promise you there's no negative reason for that other than I just wanted to wait until his feast day, which is October 22nd. And since that is tomorrow, let's talk about him today. All right. In doing so, it's important that we ha- we start with the fact that he was an incredibly holy man and a man of prayer. In fact, according to John Paul's press secretary, his hour to hour and a half of prayer, private prayer, first thing every morning was the best part of his day. He would say that. Now, when visitors would come and they would arrive to join him for Mass, they would always note that he would be kneeling in prayer. And some said that he even looked like he was speaking with somebody invisible. That's interesting because many people, including his best friend, Cardinal Jeevich, who was his secretary for decades, reported that they would actually hear John Paul at times engaged in conversation with God. You know, that Cardinal said that he would pray for up to an hour in a trance without moving even a millimeter. So prayer was the rhythm of his life, a life centered on the Eucharist. He made time to pray uh, throughout the day, before meals, after meals. He would pray his divine office, which we priests pray five times a day. He would pray that throughout his day. At six in the morning, at noon, and again at six in the evening, he would stop whatever he was doing and pray the Angelus. You know, he prayed several rosaries each day, went to confession every week, and did not let a single day pass without receiving Holy Communion. And on each Friday, and in fact every day during Lent, he would walk the Stations of the Cross. And speaking of Lent, during Lent he would eat only one meal a day, and he always fasted on the eve of Our Lady's feast days. So just think, he did this while at the same time having all the administrative duties and the pastoral duties which he did, which alone would have worn pretty much anyone else down. You know, each night he would look out his window over St. Peter's Square and out upon the whole world, and he would make the sign of the cross over it, blessing the world good night. You know, one of his biographers noted that he seldom went to bed before midnight and he often slept right on the bare floor. And witnesses would say that he would spend hours at a time and sometimes the entire night prostrate, meaning laying flat on that marble floor right in front of the tabernacle with his arms outstretched in the shape of a cross. His aides also would would state that he made all of his major decisions actually on his knees before the Blessed Sacrament. So, while being a man of prayer, John Paul based it all on God's grace. You know, but he also accomplished <clears throat> a lot of incredible achievements. Um, you know, in his time as the second longest serving pope in history. Um, For instance, he warned of the dangers of atheistic socialism. He ignited the collapse of communism. Um, He focused on true, not false, ecumenism by engaging the Anglicans, the Lutherans, the Orthodox, and evangelical Protestants in ongoing dialogue. He showed the world that even though we can't pray together because they believe in something else, we Catholics believe in that true, one true God, but even though we can't pray together, people of different faiths could be together to pray. That's kind of interesting. You know, we had to remove Father Allen's video last week, unfortunately, about John Paul's visit to Assisi, where he um, did kiss the Koran, uh, because the comments became very hostile. Um, Yes, I personally believe, this is just my personal belief, that he, John Paul, made a big mistake kissing the Koran and should not have done it at all because I think it caused, as we could see by the comments, a lot of confusion that he would support Islamic teaching or something like that. He didn't. But this is something we Catholics can't do. We, We know the truth. We have it in our faith. 
But Father Allen never said that John Paul should have done this. He just stated what happened, and he never said it was a good idea. Father Allen just stated what John Paul's intent was, and his intent was one of living with our neighbors in peace, not a statement of truthfulness about the Quran. So please, thank you to keep that in mind. Now, other noteworthy things uh, were John Paul's response, for instance, to the sexual revolution with Theology of the Body. This is an incredible watershed work. If you haven't read it, please, please do. Showing the beauty of marital love and how it imitates even the Trinity. He also commissioned the new catechism of the Catholic Church, presenting this strong Catholic teaching, but yet in a comprehensive and very simple and coherent way, easy to read. And perhaps the greatest achievement of all, John Paul brought to the world an awareness of divine mercy and St. Faustina. He said that he believed the reason he was made Pope, can you imagine this? The reason he believed he was made Pope was because of divine mercy. And as he saw it, was his special task before God, why God gave him the role. In fact, at St. Faustina's canonization, he said that it was the happiest day of his life. He said that in private, but several people heard it. Now, here's something interesting. St. Faustina wrote about what many believe was her own canonization. Yeah, in her vision, and this is in her diary, in her vision, she saw St. Peter whisper in the Holy Father's ear. Now, she didn't know who the Pope was at the time. She didn't say it was John, Paul, but she said the Holy Father. Whispered, St. Peter whispered in his ear. Now, on the day of St. Faustina's canonization in 2000, it appeared that John Paul was not going to make any kind of a statement about Divine Mercy Sunday. But then, suddenly, after being silent in meditation, he proclaimed it as a feast, a universal feast, and put it on the universal calendar. Now, so did St. Peter whisper in John Paul's ear? Well, we don't know, but some, including me, think so. That is because John Paul said that divine mercy is the most important message of our times, and he basically canonized the divine mercy message and devotion by declaring this divine mercy Sunday that we just mentioned, or the second Sunday of Easter, as just that divine mercy Sunday. You know, <clears throat> Jesus himself <clears throat> told St. Faustina that divine mercy was mankind's last hope of salvation and that she would help prepare the world for his final coming. How? Well, with the help, a little help, of John Paul II. You know, Jesus said that a spark would come from Poland to prepare the world for this final coming. And that spark we Marians believe is St. Faustina, Divine Mercy, and John Paul II. You know, he said it, that it was as if Christ was saying through St. Faustina that evil does not have the last word. And in fact, he continued to proclaim it through his entire life all the way up to the day he passed away. And John Paul, he died on the vigil of Divine Mercy Sunday. And it was actually Divine Mercy Sunday in many parts of the world. And he passed away within one hour of receiving Holy Communion and having been to confession. And remember, that's the condition of the promise. Go to confession, receive Holy Communion, and you will be completely wiped clean of all sin and punishment. So that means God's reward to him for tirelessly spreading this message of divine mercy would be that he got that divine mercy promise of the forgiveness, as we said, of all sin and all punishment. In other words, he got his slate wiped clean. His soul was spotless, just like a second baptism and just like yours can be on Divine Mercy Sunday as well. So thank you, Alma, for the question, a great one. And until next week, may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.